Hope you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport, courtesy of Younger Mitsubishi in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today, we are in this one because there are actually two big changes for the 2024 model year. You also get America's best warranty, being five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain but if you were to go with younger Mitsubishi in Hagerstown Maryland they actually double the powertrain warranty giving you a 20 year 200,000 mile powertrain warranty which is pretty insane not only that one of the big changes for the 2024 model year is you now get two years or 30,000 miles of complimentary maintenance whereas with the 2023 you did not so that's pretty cool and you get a rally inspired four-wheel drive system as well Mitsubishi calls it all-wheel control but we'll get more into that in the video so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with bracing so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 outlander sport first one being the s starting at twenty three thousand six hundred ninety five dollars which is a seven hundred dollar bump from the 2023 model year but everything is getting bumped up for 2024 model years just because of inflation of course es for twenty five thousand six ninety five le which is the trim we are in today starting at starting at $26,395, SE for $27,695, and lastly, the SEL, which is a new trim level for the Outlander Sport for 2024. That one starts at $28,495. Essentially, what Mitsubishi did there is they eliminated the GT trim, which is what was in existence last year, and they replaced it with the SEL, essentially to be a little more uniform with the rest of the Mitsubishi lineup, because that's how the Outlander does it as well. But anyways, of course, with all those trim levels, there are a couple different power plants available for the Outlander sport as well first one belonging to all of the trim levels but the SEL and the one that we have today this one is powered by a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 148 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 145 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,200 rpm power being sent to all four wheels again through Mitsubishi's rally inspired four-wheel drive system which they call all-wheel control that power being sent to the ground through a CVT 0 to 60 time approximately 8.7 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 20 in the city 29 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is that other engine configuration of course belonging to the sel trim level that one's powered by a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder 168 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 167 pound feet of torque coming in at 4100 rpm power sent to all four wheels yet again through a cvt 0 to 60 time approximately eight seconds flat for that one with mpg numbers coming in at 23 in the city 28 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel so now have you got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put that acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 mitsubishi outlander sport here up to speed all right here's our straightaway in three two one go <laughs> not the quickest thing in the world does get noisy but it's not bad i don't mind the noise okay so not the quickest thing in the world when i initially hit the gas i was expecting a little more punch but yeah i didn't get it unfortunately so i'll just leave it at that there is a more powerful engine with that sel trim level so perhaps that one would give you a little better merging power onto the highway things like that but ultimately the more you drive a vehicle the more you get used to it the more you learn how it operates so you really shouldn't have any issues in merging onto the highway because you are going to get used to it of course but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 11.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.9 inch solid rear disc as far as that 60 to 0 stopping distance goes that comes in at an extremely impressive 118 feet so as far as braking feel goes it feels like it i love it man mitsubishi crushed it with the braking feel on this thing 118 feet by the way that is a sports sedan number typically with suvs you find like 125 if not the 130s like the hyundai santa fe is 132 i think it is the uh volkswagen atlas is 139 so 118 feet that's like a sports sedan number right there so that is absolutely amazing and you could feel that with the firmer braking feel on this thing so well done Mitsubishi I absolutely love the braking feel in this thing but touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension of course front and rear stabilizer bars 
as far as ride quality goes, we got some freaking smooth roads here in Hagerstown, so absolutely no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, it's on the looser side of things 100%, so definitely wouldn't have minded if Mitsubishi firmed up that steering feel, or better yet, if Mitsubishi allowed a sport driving mode on the Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. So, hence the name. So would have loved to have seen that to at least firm up the steering feel a little bit. Um, also with the acceleration. I, I think with a name like Outlander Sport and with the rally inspired four wheel drive system, they should definitely put a little more effort into making the Outlander Sport a little more sporty since they have the word in the name. But see, so yeah, I guess what I'm getting at is wouldn't have minded a little bit firmer of a steering feel on this thing. As far as cabin noise goes, it definitely gets a bit noisy, not only with the acceleration, but with the road noise as well. So I did notice that first thing when I was driving, it is a little bit noisier vehicle but that's to be expected in this particular vehicle so I, I personally wouldn't have any issues I'll just put it that way touching on visibility I can see perfectly fine out the back in terms of rear visibility at least so 100% not gonna have any issues there and one better in terms of forward visibility Mitsubishi actually gives you rain sensing windshield wipers coming standard on every single trim level of the Outlander Sport didn't used to be that way so you gotta love that so essentially what that is is whenever the Outlander Sport detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you so just one last thing you got to worry about kind of like automatic headlights assisting with forward visibility so you could better enjoy the drive in this thing but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport all right so here she is you guys the new 2024 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport finished in mercury gray metallic in case you were curious of our exact exterior color name that we had on this one as always let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the VIN first character is the letter J indicating that the Outlander Sport is still built and assembled in Japan that's pretty cool but let's go ahead and start up front in this one full LED headlights do come standard for every single trim level across the board meaning both low beam and high beam so I do love that LED daytime running lights coming standard as well along with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark at night headlights will turn on automatically for you there but you also get automatic high beams coming standard for every single trim level across the board. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So love that feature. LED fog lights for the ES trim level and up. You guys can see those as well. And then there is going to be some chrome trim accenting found kind of just surrounding the headlights and the front grill up front as well. But in my personal opinion, it looks good, but I think the Outlander Sport is due for a redesign in my personal opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, but that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, if you were looking for black roof rails, you do have to go with the SEL trim level. So only that top trim is gonna give you roof rails up top, but black window surrounds do come standard. Rear privacy glass coming standard for all trim levels across the board as well. Taking a look at the uh, front fenders there, there's either gonna be chrome or gloss gloss black accents on the front fenders. We have uh, the gloss black accents because the LE, in case I didn't tell you guys already, it's kind of like the sport appearance package. So you do have the um, black accents pretty much throughout. And LE, by the way, stands for limited edition. Also didn't mention that yet, but take a look at the side mirrors. They're gonna be body colored or gloss black. Of course, gloss black being for the uh, LE trim level. And they will be heated then as well. No integrated turn signals because they are located down on the front fenders. I actually love that that's a jdm thing japanese domestic market so big fan of that take a look at the wheel setup 16 inch steel wheels with covers for the s trim level 18 inch two-toned alloys for the es se and sel trims and then 18 inch black painted alloys for our le trim level that we have with us here today so overall that pretty much rounds out the side profile here let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one all the way to the top you will find a body colored shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper if you guys take a look at that rear window you're going to find that four-wheel drive badging that is because Mitsubishi's all-wheel control system is actually a four-wheel drive system so again originally bred for rally racing in the dirt and snow so it's definitely going to hold up quite nicely here in the snow at least in Hagerstown but LED taillights actually do come standard for all trim levels across the board as well you do have the trim level badging back there you guys can see the limited edition badging found on a rear tailgate just below it all there is going to be a single exhaust outlet tucked away so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip <laughs> All 
Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the Outlander Sport, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is going to be a manual tailgate for all trim levels across the board. So once opened up though, cargo capacity comes in at 21.7 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 49.5 cubic feet. There is some cargo lighting back there. There is a cargo cover available that goes for $205. It's going to be tie down anchors back there. There is one grocery bag hook kind of found on the driver's side in the back there. Cargo nets are going to be available of course there is some indented storage found on the back two corners then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you are going to find a spare tire as opposed to the fix a flat which i personally prefer but then make our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 36.3 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall this is me sitting behind my own driving position here rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard for all trim levels i gotta love that dual rear usb charging ports though coming with the le trim that we have today day end up so that's how you're going to go ahead and get that but then make our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating for the s es and le trims heated front seats for the le trim level end up leather seating for the sel trim level only and then there's going to be a leather suede combination for the se trim level overall at least in our le trim that we have today seating was okay not the very most comfortable seats there are some awkward pressure points and they're kind of stiff too for whatever reason mitsubishi does that um i know with their mirage as well so not the most comfortable seats, but it should be enough to get by. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is going to be leather wrapped for the LE trim level and up that we have today. And I like the gloss black finish towards the bottom of the steering wheel as well. To make our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key here. You got your Mitsubishi logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock. Pretty basic key for the most part, which means if you lose it in Ocean City, Maryland, it's going to be less expensive to replace. Haven't done that before, but it is a push button start for the SE and S. The L trims but in our case all I'm going to do here is simply put my phone on the brake and turn the key and so once started up when it comes to the gauges tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer is on your right there is a small digital to screen front and center and that screen is going to give you things like trip a trip b there's your outside temperature uh how many miles you have left until you hit it empty and my very favorite part about the digital screen at least is when you turn the car off it's going to say see you that's such a japanese thing to say so i absolutely love it but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality auto dimming rear view mirror actually comes standard for all trim levels across the board that is wonderful usually only find that on the upper trim levels for uh some of the competition so I love that because there are some bright lights out there these days, but home light controls for the SEL trim level only automatic climate control coming standard for all trim levels across the board. That's pretty cool. Uh, just in front of the shifter, you do have a little bit of rubberized storage. I love the design surrounding the shifter. It's kind of this texturized silver finish. You got the four wheel drive button as well, just in front of the shifter, just behind the shifter, a couple cup holders and within the center armrest, it's actually a decent amount of storage in there. So I don't have any issues there. 12 volt power outlet as well. Overall, as far as interior quality goes, lots of black plastics for the most part. That's to be expected, but like I said, I do love how they finished everything in silver with the texturized design surrounding the shifter. A lot of the competition will figure will finish that in like a matte black or matte gray plastic. So they did a little bit of a design to it there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. Seven inch color touchscreen display for the S and ES trims, and then an eight inch color touchscreen display for the LE trim level and up. Either way, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming, but the Android Auto Apple CarPlay that is going to come standard on the le trim level and up only so i want to specify that because that's pretty important to a lot of people being that the navigation is going to be displayed up there if you have a cell phone with data of course so that's what i want to emphasize but can of course check out your radio information up there as well and so when it comes to the sound systems there are two of them four speakers is going to come on the ses and le trims and then six speakers for the se and sel so having said that that of course means that we do have the four speaker sound system with us here today so let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one Nah, it sounded like four speakers to be honest the clarity wasn't that great the bass was actually okay for four speakers i didn't have a problem with that i'm um, seeing as it's four speaker sound system but yeah, the clarity wasn't there, but that's to be expected in a uh, four speaker sound system after all. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put the Outlander Sport in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Not the very highest quality, but it'll certainly get the job done, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us 
into safety. And so front side side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors, tethers to children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Forward collision mitigation system with pedestrian detection and lane departure warning as well. Then if you were to go with the SE or SEL trims, they are going to add to that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and then lane change assist as well. So Overall, I want to come to my final thoughts here of the Outlander Sport. I gotta love the rally-inspired four-wheel drive system, especially because we do get quite a bit of snow here in Hagerstown. So if you get snow or if you're driving a lot of dirt roads, this thing's got you covered. Also, amazing braking in the Outlander Sport. Didn't expect that. 60 to 0 and 118 feet. That's a brilliant number. Very firm braking feel. So immediately brings you to a stop. You do get America's Best Warranty as well. So you get a ton of peace of mind. Not to mention the younger Mitsubishi warranty. If you were to actually go to Hagerstown and get one of these, 20 year 200,000 miles by that time you're going to want a new car anyways but i do love the led lighting as standard not just in the front but in the back as well as far as the room for improvement goes very basic sound system four speakers is really nothing these days also i do think it's due for kind of a redesign um they've had this style for quite a bit now and then the last thing as far as room for improvement goes i think it needs a little more sportiness since it does call itself the outlander sport would have loved to have seen a heavier steering feel and also a little more power maybe the SEL is going to compensate for our lack of power in our current trim level that we have today but I don't know I will say though it's pretty slow but anyways let me know what you guys think of the Outlander Sport in the comment section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and I will see you guys all in the next video Stay gold. Tell me I'm the only one that you know. Life could be a dream, sweetheart.